My name is Joe Sheehan. So I was born on Halloween. <laughs> Don't know if I'm a trick or a treat, but I was born on Halloween. My great-great-grandfather came from Ireland when he was maybe about 18 years old or so. And he had one boy, but that one boy had about seven, eight sons, so the family really spread out from there. He was born in 1825 in Ireland. I've been very fortunate through my life. I don't know, I've, I believe somebody's watching over me. To me, religion's very important, family's very important, and even in golf, I like golf too. When I was born in, in 1946, we were living in Bird Island, Minnesota. It's a real small town. Dad felt it's very important to go through Catholic school, grade school, and high school, both. And uh, played on the basketball team when I was there, enjoyed that a lot. I don't hang around with my cousin, John Frazzle, very much, and he asked, do you want to go to Winstead? They had a new airport they had a dance that night. I couldn't do anything. Winston is my hometown. That's her hometown, yeah. And uh, I said, well, I'm not doing anything special. So we hopped in the car and drove about an hour to Winstead. And uh, we both saw these two blondes and kind of flipped over the blonde thing, you know. And uh, so then I uh, didn't get enough courage to ask her to dance and had a couple of beers that didn't work either. And so I stayed over at my sister's house there in Winstead. And the next morning we went to this, uh, like a drive-in and Mary Jo was the car hop that came to our car. And my cousin John asked her for a date, and she was really nice about it and said, well, I don't date strangers. And John says, I've got a cousin, Kathy Sheehan. Do you know Kathy? And Mary Jo said, yeah, I know Kathy. Well, check with Kathy, and then we'll, we'll go on a date later on. So a couple weeks went by, and uh, I asked John, my cousin, I said, do you ever date that girl? And he said, no. And I said, well, I've got the same cousin, Kathy. Can I, uh, can I call her and uh, date her as well? So I did, I wrote her a letter and explained the situation, and she said, yeah, we can go on a date, so that's how it started. <laughs> well, I was just being polite in this, so when he came to pick me up... This is the first date. She, she stood me up on the first date. I had I, the car polished and everything all clean. This is my first paycheck ever. I'm 18 years old, and so this was really, really important. So I didn't know this kid. More important to get a job. I'm not going to get fired because of this. This is just not going to happen. He comes to Green Giant. Yeah, I'm not going to give up, so I went to where she was And he goes looking for me, and it was just fortunate I was having my break. And I'm sitting outside with his cousin working a 12-hour shift. And he said, how come you didn't come, you know, and I said, you weren't important. Like, and so we made a date the next day. So the rest is history. We eventually went out. He went back so to school. So you're glad I was persistent? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> and so he went back to school uh, three weeks later, and then we just wrote back and forth. Went to a school in Georgia Tech. So I went to school downtown Minneapolis, and he went to the University of Minnesota. And our apartments kept getting closer and closer together, and after three two years, years three, yeah. two or three years, we finally decided to get married. <laughs> Long story. <laughs> Before I went in to work for 3M, I graduated uh, from college and then uh, they started a first lottery for draft into the service. And the only lottery I've ever won, I got 79 in that lottery, which I didn't want because they ended up going into service. Vietnam was just tapering off right then. So when I got there, they said every other battalion's go over to Germany and Vietnam, and the battalion before you went to Germany, and I thought, oh man. So anyhow, when I got my orders finally for Germany, as far as I was concerned, that was the difference between heaven and hell. Uh, I've always dreamed of going to Europe, so I got assigned uh, just south of, Man south of Frankfurt a little bit, in a town called close to Mannheim, and Mary Jo came over with the two kids. She had to wait for a couple of weeks, because our son still wasn't born yet, and then she came over on a non-stop flight that went from Minneapolis to Frankfurt, just lucked out getting that flight. So she came over and joined me. When 
I was with 3M, I traveled, I hit six continents, and I don't want to go to the seventh continent. Probably my favorite, couple of favorite ones is Europe. I really enjoyed Europe. Probably the next favorite was Russia. I was able to go to Moscow. And then uh, probably the most favorite was South Africa. That uh, when I went to South Africa, Sherry was going to go to school. My daughter Sherry was going to go to school at London. So it was the timing was just right. I thought I could bring Sherry along, go to Africa, and then drop her off on the way back from Africa. On the so way she, to Africa. <laughs> that's right. So she joined, joined me in Africa. Then when I was here in Minnesota, I went through a 50-year midlife crisis, right at 50 years. So I made the decision, I had a sailboat, just sail down the Mississippi. So we did it over, I think, five different summers. Mary Jo joined me on the last leg from St. Louis to New Orleans and uh, just went downstream and then trailered it back, back to Minneapolis. And it was a great adventure, I thought. And, uh, it was an adventure. Great adventure. <laughs> One time life. You know? <laughs> One time Do it and experience. you're done. <laughs> They're pushing water. I was kind of having trouble getting across the river the other side, right in New Orleans, and the ship was a long ways away, and all of it, there wasn't much wind. All of a sudden, I heard this. I look around, I'm the only person in the river. I think he's honking at me. I mean, huge, and, you know, and you're just hoping they don't give you any kind of waves to suck you in. He is dead. I mean, there was about five times we, we wore out our guardian angels. <laughs> I started by buying two left-handed golf, wooden shafted golf clubs for 25 cents each. And I went to the backyard, we had a football field in the backyard, and we put three cans around and I would hit it and play in those cans. In the back of my mind, I always felt when I retired, I wanted to uh, live on a golf course and go full time. So when we moved down to Texas, that was a high priority to find a house. And we ended up on a perfect house that overlooks the 18th green on this golf course. I pretty much play every day when I'm down in Austin. So it keeps me pretty busy. <laughs> When my first daughter was born, I was so excited that I smiled so much that my cheeks hurt that day. In fact, I got sick. I had to stay home from work because I, I don't know what if I sympathize with my wife or what, but I was so excited uh, I had to stay away from, stay out of work because my stomach just turned into a knot. Dad thought, well, big companies have stockholder meetings. We can too. So once a year, we meet at Cragen's my brothers and sisters and all the kids, and there's one time we had 70 of us that we rented out these cabins in Cragen, but we do that every year. I think what's important is that the bond of family continues. You know, you don't always want to agree, but that bond is there. We loved every one of our children. And then uh, all our grandchildren, we really thoroughly enjoy. That's so important to me. My children made this for me. The greatest grandpa, and then we have handprints from each one of the kids. And that's what I plan on doing retirement now, is to spend most of the time visiting grandchildren. The other thing that was on my bucket list was I love racing. You know, I guess when I was a kid, they used to have a racetrack and I'd hear them racing and I always went to a lot of races. So I always wanted to drive a Formula 3 car. So my kids bought me a Groupon, I guess, to, to go to Dallas and drive a Formula 3 car. I only spun out twice, <laughs> but I survived. And then the other thing was to uh, ride in a NASCAR car, and as a ride-along, they call it. The, a professional driver drives, and you just ride along, and they get up to 200 miles an hour or so around the track in Dallas. And so there was a couple more items on my bucket list that I was able to accomplish. I'd like to take her to Africa, because she didn't go to that one in Africa, right. and I'd like to take her somewhere in that Africa. That would be a, coming up. a nice trip. Yeah. We're, we're looking forward yeah. to that. Well, my bucket list is getting low. I'm running out of things. I, don't I know. doubt that. <laughs> it's just been a blessing. That uh, we're very, very fortunate. Yeah. You know.